for questions. Fire away, Fab. The question I wanted to ask is, um, like I said to you outside, I've been inspired by you guys for, for a few years, three years now. But there's, you know, I get my moments where I get feel like I've got a desire for God and feel moments that I don't have desire for God. And, yeah. you know, and sometimes it goes a week, two weeks where I don't even think about God and sometimes it's an intense week when I do. Yeah. Just want to know, like, how I can, why, you know, is it just about fear that I don't have that desire or is it? Is it no, it's not just about fear, no. Um, obviously, fear plays a part in desire. So every time you have fear, it suppresses desire, certainly. But, but desire is not just about fear. You see, you see, there are people in the sixth fear of the spirit world who have no desire for God. No desire to have a personal relationship with God. Now, they don't have much fear. They have no fear that affects their love of other people at all. Um, they obviously do have some fears about God, but they don't have fears related to other people. Um, they have perfected their natural love, the love that comes out of them towards others and the love that they, they allow other people to love them, but they still haven't developed a desire for God. So, and the first human couple didn't have a desire for God. And yet they were completely without fear, actually, when they were created. So they had no fear at all. And they still didn't develop a desire for God. So developing desire is not just about your injuries. Right? And this is something we need to understand about our emotional self. That just because if you don't have a desire for something, it's not just because you have an injury. It's because also you don't have a desire of some kind. That, and desire is something that has to be developed. You know, you, you, you never start something generally without there being a spark of something. But, but you generally don't do anything about it until that spark sort of develops into a flame and then develops into a furnace, you know, that fires everything that you do. And that's the same with your desire for God. So, so there was, there's a couple of things that I would look at. Firstly, I'd look at my fears, like every time you have a desire for God, as you know, you have quite an emotional week when you have a desire for God, and maybe there are some fears associated with you having an, a week that's emotional like that and feeling like if every week was like that, it might be a bit overwhelming, and so there's a tendency to shut down. But... but uh, and sure, there are I'm times able when to function too, you know. Yeah, you think in that you're... week, um, I can't sing, I can't do much. It's so there's some of your fears. Yeah. Uh, some of your fears are that you're not going to be able to continue your normal day to day life if every week's like this, and so that obviously is fear that's stopping a desire for God. But to be honest, I feel a lot of the stuff about desire for God is just a lack of desire. For God, like a, a lack of desire to know God and to understand God and to understand the importance of the relationship with God and all these other things. Because I, I don't feel, when I have a week where I'm like really focused, and, and I usually have months, not weeks, where I'm really focused on God, and I don't feel like I can't do anything else. I feel like I can do everything else better. So, so that, you know, would tend to indicate that if you're having a feeling like it's shutting yourself down from doing other things, then maybe you know, there are quite a lot of fears that are being confronted every time you have a desire for God. But my suggestion is, um, firstly, work your way through what fears are preventing your desire for God. And in fact, I would focus on those fears. That, to me, they are the first fears that are worth developing, worth working your way through. Like, so, so the average person on this planet can list 20, 30, 50, 100 fears. If they are honest with themselves, they possibly could list thousands of their own fears. But very few of us ever list fears relating to God, right? So we don't focus very much of our attention on the relationship. The relationship isn't our first priority. If, you, if you're honest with yourself, your relationship with law is your first priority. Before God, yes. Yeah, before yeah. God. Yeah. And, and obviously that means that if something comes up in your relationship with Laura, your relationship with God is put on the back burner, right? If your relationship with God was your first priority, then your relationship with Laura would be second priority. 
And, and that means that if something happened in your relationship with Laura, it wouldn't interfere with your relationship with God. You would still want to develop your relationship with God. Does that make sense? So one of the things we need to look at is our priorities. So when we're looking at the aspect of desire, developing desire, and this is something that will help you with some of that homework I gave you about you know, finding and developing desire, how do you go about finding and developing desire. Part of developing desire is about your internal priorities. What, what are your current priorities? If we're honest with ourselves, most of us would have to say that our current priorities uh, you know, for some, it's about avoiding fear every day. That's their priority. For some, it's about getting their addictions met every day. That's their priority. They don't even have a priority with their relationship with their partner. As long as the, they get their addictions met, it doesn't really matter if they're a partner or somebody else who meets them. It doesn't really matter to them, right? That's, so a lot of terms, our, even our relationship with our partner is quite low down on our priority list, if we have a partner at all, Right? And, of course, all of you have a partner, just some of you are not with them at the moment, right? Because, uh, because your partner is your other half, your soulmate. That is your partner. You're just not with them at the moment. You're not aware of them. You're not conscious of them. But, but a lot of the times you don't even care about that. You know, that's another priority that's on, down on the list. And, and often what we need to do is readjust our priorities if we're ever going to develop relationships. So if you're going to develop your relationship with God, one of the things we're going to need to do is adjust our priority system as to what's the most important relationship. Right? So, so from my perspective, my most important relationships are God, my soul, which includes my soulmate, right? because that's, she's, she's one half of my soul. So it automatically must include her. Right? So that's my next priority, the soul, my soul, my own. Then, so, that my, so mine, which is not just me, but also the other half of me. And then the souls of others is the next relationship that I would like to develop. So soul, others. So not my children. They're not my children. I've got, you know, two sons, but they're not my children. They are God's children. So they are just as important, but not more or less important to me than any other person on this planet. Does that make sense? So I want to develop a relationship with them just as much as I want to develop a relationship with any of you. Right? Can you see... If you place your priorities, now, now of course you've got other things happening down here in your priority list. You know, if you're honest with yourself, you, you might have 30, 50 things, 100 things even. You might finish up with, you know, what are the things you love doing and all that all goes on the list. But what I find is that most people don't have that as their first three priorities. The majority of people have one, num priority number one, avoidance of pain. Priority number two, Meeting of addictions. Priority number three, enjoying your life. Now, I don't know how you're going to do that with the first two priorities in play, but that's what we finish up doing. We try to think we think we can enjoy our lives while we avoid all pain and meet our addictions. But, but that, that's not possible, of course. But that's why we often have an unhappy life. But those first three things generally are the average person's and the average person on this planet has those first three priorities, which are completely different than those priorities. Now, in order to swap our priority systems over, we need to recognise firstly that we have a priority and what that priority is, and then we need to recognise that that is obviously out of harmony with the happiness in our soul. That's why we have unhappiness, is because our priority systems are out of harmony with God's love and laws. So we'd be better off bringing our priority systems in harmony with God, into harmony with God's love and laws. And once we recognise the importance of that, we start to adjust our priorities. So, so for like, as I said, the average person's priority system is avoid pain, Get my addictions met. Right? And then enjoy life. 
Uh, right? Usually the first three priorities in the average person doesn't even involve another person, aside from how that person can meet their addictions and how that person can help them avoid pain and how that person can help them enjoy life. That's why most relationships break down very rapidly as soon as one problem comes up. You know, like, for example, the average male on this planet, if he doesn't get sex for a month, he's already almost breaking up with his partner because his priority systems are all about these things. Right? And none of those things are getting met properly. And so right? he doesn't get to avoid pain while his partner is avoiding him. He doesn't get to have his addiction for sex met and he doesn't get to enjoy his life because most of his life revolves around the fact that a, a woman is showing him attention sexually. And so he's willing to discard that woman and just get another one who does those things. Right? So he can say he loves that woman, but the reality is his love of that woman is way down on the list. Because if your love of that woman was way up on the list, you wouldn't avoid your own pain you wouldn't you know, want your addictions met with her. You wouldn't uh, focus on enjoyment of life. You'd be focused on sorting out the relationship between yourself and her so that you can have a happy relationship rather than a codependent one. Yeah. Mary, you wanted to say with that? Well, just equally, if you were the woman in that relationship, yep. you would, if you really uh, had the priority... This is number one, two, yeah, yeah, number two then you wouldn't avoid sex for a month in order to avoid pain, meet your addictions and enjoy your life more. Exactly. You yeah. wouldn't do that. You just couldn't do it, right? Because you know straight away that there's something going on, there's something wrong, there's something interfering. What is it? You'd want to know. You, you wouldn't do things like that. So to, the majority of us have to be very honest with ourselves about our priorities. Most of our priorities are very narcissistic and selfish. They are, they are not involved around our relationship with God, our relationship with our soul you know, and the other half of our soul or the love of our, or, or care that we have for others, but rather they are evol revolving around those three things that are, that are our real priority. Now, while those things maintain, are maintained as a priority, you're going to find a developing relationship with God quite difficult. And you're going to find it wax and wanes. You know, you, you, whenever one of these things comes up, whenever, whenever anything that's more important than God comes up, you will abandon God for that thing. So if your fear is more important than God, you'll abandon God and you'll embrace your fear. When you say embrace it, you'll live in it. If, you, you know, if your avoidance of pain is your primary priority, whenever that comes up in your relationship with God, you'll just abandon God and avoid the pain. That's what you'll do. Whenever your addictions come up and they get confronted in your relationship with God, if your priority is to get your addictions met above your relationship with God, then of course you'll go for your addiction and forget about God for a while. This is why we often forget about God in our daily life. When you really desire somebody, you don't forget about them. You don't ever forget about them. You think about it. You don't, do you? You, if you? you remember the times you're really, really in love? Right? Can you remember a time during the day when you didn't think about them? It's, not, it's completely the opposite, isn't it? When you're really, really in love, you think about the person all the time. When you really love somebody, that's what you do. You do do that. But most of us don't do that with God. Right? For lots of reasons. You know, there's, like I said, there's literally thousands of reasons why a person may not or be challenged by the, their relationship with God or may not want a relationship with God. There's lots and lots of reasons that are potentially the reason why. But if you're truly going to progress on the divine love path, as we call it, or as people call it, the way that, that God designed to progress, if you're going to progress on the way, you are going to need to firstly have as your primary priority your relationship with God. Right? And, and, and when you don't, you will find you'll abandon God every time something else of more importance in your life comes up. So what I, would look, what I would do personally with that issue that you've raised is I would look back over the times when I had like a, a developing relationship with God where I felt there was some connection with God in that week. And then what I would do is I'd look at what happened the following week and see 
how, what that tells me about my current priorities. So what happened the following week? What might have happened was that, you know, you had a bit of a uh, disagreement with Laura and the relationship was a bit topsy-turvy and that interfered with your relationship with God. Might be that. Or it might be that, you know, you had some gigs come up, you know, some music gigs come up and, you know, because of the gigs and your engagement with the gigs, you forgot about your relationship with God. Or it might be that some issues come up with the family, you know, with your daughter or someone, and, the, and then during that process you forgot about your relationship with God. Now, every time you forgot about your relationship with God, that tells you what your priorities are that are higher than your priority to be with God. Yeah, and I was looking at that, and I was like, and I, and I started doing that already, yep. this analysing when I lost my focus for God. Yep. And as it's been growing over the years, yep. but it's like, you know, I have this moment with this time with God and then it disappears because something does come yep. up. Yep. And then I avoid that emotion for one, two weeks until God keeps, and I know inside that God's showing me. Yep. So it gets to a point where it becomes so much that I need to start to connect to the emotion yep. and God and then it gets cleared again and then I've got this relationship with God again. But it's yep. like I get frustrated because... I have this feeling that I know that that's the process, but it could be easier. True. But if you think about it, God wants the relationship with you more than you want the relationship with God. That's true, yeah. And that applies to all of us. <clears throat> God wants the relationship with me more than I want my relationship with God. And that's, that will forever be yeah. the truth, right? So if no relationship is actually occurring, it's always to do with something going on internally, always. Now, it can only be two things. One is that we are, you know, lacking desire, real desire. And, or, and two is that we're in the process of a lot of fear. It's got to be one of those two things. So, so all we can do is focus. So, so if it's fear, then yes, there are certain fears and you know them. You know, you know when things are not so smooth between each other, there's fear that comes up. When you've got some issues with your children, like there's fears that come up you know that those fears in particular seem to interfere a lot with your relationship with God. So you know there is a relationship between those fears and God. your priority system. Yeah. Those fears are telling you your priority system, actually. Okay. They're, they're telling you the truth about your priorities. And, and I feel at times you're not willing to see the truth about the priority. Yeah. Right? You want to tell yourself that, no, you really do have a desire for a relationship yeah, no, with God. I, don't, I know I don't have that yep. full relationship with God. Yeah, when, when there are other things in your priority list. So, so you know, when something happens with your daughter, yeah. you know that you get very distressed. Yeah, yeah. Right? Generally yeah. you do. Yeah. Now, you, you know during that time you've got, you, 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 you think less about God. You, you, you barely think about God at all. So you know that there's something in your relationship with your daughter that, that, that is causing an emotion inside of you. you know, it's about understanding yourself emotionally. There's something that causes an emotion in you in that moment that causes you to abandon God and focus on your relationship with your daughter. Does that make sense? Yep. Yeah, yeah. and, and you've got to find out what that is. Yeah. Now, God's already trying to tell you what it is. And the fact that you don't know means that you're not open to knowing. Well, with my daughter, things have moved a lot in that area because I went through a lot of those processes that you're talking about yesterday. Correct. Yeah. Now it's more about what's happening with us. Still with a woman though. Exactly, yeah. So yes. something's gone off my daughter and now on to Laura. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I'm still not willing to see my mum's part in it all. Yep. But also not willing to see your own addiction in it all. Yeah. And that's more the point. Yeah. You 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 there are two sides to everything that's going on in your current relationship. You remember, as I said yesterday, if we just... Uh, I'd probably like to leave that there, actually. Um, yesterday, remember, I drew... Uh, I said there were two types of relationship: forgiveness relationship, repentance relationships, right? So here's you. Here's your relationship with Laura, your partner. So there's that relationship. That's a relationship where you need to repent, because you created an addiction with Laura that you want to met. Any problems that you have with Laura are all about your addictions and her addictions. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, they all come from your refusal to forgive your mother. Right?
Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, your refusal to forgive your mother creates a, a, a fear in you of, and therefore an addiction. When you refuse to forgive your mother, the only reason why you would refuse is you're afraid of something, right? You're afraid of some grief or you're afraid, you're afraid of crying about some issue relating to your mother, right? And what that does, it, it, you then have fear associated. That's the only reason why you'd not cry because you have some fear associated with it. And then you create the addiction with your mum. You try to do it with your mum first, but that doesn't work because she's the one who's caused the actual pain. So what you do is you establish a relationship with another person which will feed... Will, yeah, that's the addiction relationship. That's the relationship you need to repent for. So when there's problems between yourself and Laura, you, the first thing you focus on is, what is it going on inside of me? What, what have I created here with Laura that I want met? That, that is because I feel pained if I don't get it met. Right? That's, that's what I need to focus on here. Now, whatever that is causes me, here's my relationship with God, causes me to abandon my relationship with God. So it's very important to work it out because anything that it causes you to abandon your relationship with God needs to be focused on as your highest priority. Right? So there's something that's going on where you want something from Laura that causes you to abandon your relationship with God. There's something addictively going on there. Right? And that's what's causing your relationship with God to be put aside for a period of time while you try to resolve whatever is going on here. Now, God's been trying to show you what it is, and the law of attraction has been trying to show you what it is, and you're resistive to it. Because if you weren't resistive, you'd already know what it is. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. So you need to honour the fact that you're resistive to it, mm. honour the fact there's got to be a fair bit of fear associated here, and then focus on praying about that issue. What, what is the fear? Why is it that I'm now abandoning God for the sake of this relationship? What's really going on for me? And that will help you work out what it is that's causing the fear side of the relationship to be affected. But the desire part of the relationship, while it is impacted by fear, can exist right? at the same time. At the same time. And what I'm suggesting is desire is all about getting to know someone, wanting to know them, wanting to spend time with them. So, so why don't you want to spend time with God and you'd rather spend time with Laura? Because I can't get my addictions met by God. True, you can't. Yeah. But what other reasons might there be? Well, because I can talk to Laura and I can yes. have her talk back to me. Okay, so you get to hear Laura yeah. without you needing to be in the development where you're open to her I'm emotions. Soft, yeah. So that would be an addiction as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like wanting to be able to hear somebody without feeling them. Yeah. So, so, see, you can hear God, but only when you feel God. Yeah. So, so, so this indicates that you want a relationship without having to feel some them. Does that make sense? Yeah, you want yeah. a relationship with Laura, but you want to be able to not feel sometimes yeah. the relationship with Laura, but still have the appearance that you're having one. Now, you won't be able to have that kind of relationship with God. No. With God, you either feel it or you don't, and if you don't, there's no relationship. <laughs> yeah, enough. Yeah. Noticed. <laughs> yeah. So, 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 can you see also another reason why it might happen? Whenever there is no relationship and God's showing you there's something wrong, there's a feeling of wanting to hook into other people around you yeah. as a way of avoiding the pain of not having the relationship with God. Yeah. So that's also. So, in other words, you're using substitution methods yeah. to avoid relationship with God. These are, these, are, these are, I'm just giving you a list of what potentially yeah. it could be yeah, a lot of them rather than on. doing all your investigative work for you. And, yeah. you know. No, yeah, I yep. understand. So you, you can see that there's two signs to it. One part is addressing the fear. So there's obviously some fears that develop when this relationship, something wrong with this relationship happens that cause you to abandon your relationship with God. But on the other side, there's something with regard to desire that causes you to focus your primary focus onto this relationship rather than your relationship with God. Mm. And my suggestion is to examine both directions mm. rather than just looking at one or the other. And the things that could be affecting desire are that you want a face-to-face -face interaction mm. because you can't feel a non-face-to-face -face interaction. That could be one thing. Yeah. Or you want an addiction met. And with God, you're not going to get your addictions met. Most of the time I feel it's that one. Yep. The, the and one. for most people it is that one quite frequently. But also it can be things like 
desire? Do I, have I learnt enough about God to develop a desire to want to know God more? In other words, are you reading enough about God, thinking enough about God, feeling enough about God to even develop a desire to know God? Mm. See, what helps me a lot there is to read material like the pageant messages or you know the Robert James Lee's material or other material like that that helps me feel my relationship with God again, right? Rather than focusing my attention on something else that's more distracting. Yeah, yeah I get my guides tell me sometimes to read stuff or you know put a yep. certain thing that you've put on youtube to watch that to get yep me feeling about god again yep, yep. so it's just that I, I just want to be able to do it without having them tell me most of the time but yeah this is another injury though that you yeah. have is that you you do want to go it alone a lot and to be honest with you nobody has mm-hmm. even i haven't the difference between myself and you is I've gone, God's always shown me where to go next. So I'm not going to be able right. to get it from God if I want to do it on my own either. No, that's right. It's like God is, God's, this is the thing. We've got to be humble enough to recognise that, that God has provided to us people who can assist us in our relationship with God. And every time you go, oh, but I want to do it myself, you're not honouring the fact that God provided you somebody who did it first. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And that's... To do with what? 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 What's that emotion? Arrogance. Yeah, basically, mm-hmm. isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's a feeling that you wanted to be the pers- person who was first, but mm-hmm. you weren't the person God selected to be first. <laughs> so, so there is some emotion there that's obviously interfering with your ability to receive help from your spirit friends and from other people who might be able to assist you. Yeah. So, so allow yourself to see that. You, you see, there's quite a number of different things that it could be affecting. This mm-hmm. desire that God's showing you there's something issue, there's an issue there. At some point, each one of you is going to have to go through the emotion, and it will be an emotion that that there is a person who God did select to be the first person. Right? I've had to go through it, mm-hmm. even though it was me. And you are going to have to go through it too. But you will have a different slant on it than I did, in that you you will have. Maybe some anger and that well, it wasn't you. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't have that. I just had fear that it was me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had other things that I had to work through about it being me. me right? But, but these are emotions that you are going to have to go through. Um, and everyone will have to go through them at some point. So, so you need to honour what God has established to be the method of helping you. Mm. And you could say, in some ways, that's you're not honouring that. No, I'm not. No. I'm not, yeah. So, so that's it's something. Only sometimes, and it's not. Yeah. Sometimes, but it's but other times, often, yeah. no. Other times, there's this feeling in you of, of independence. Yeah. Is probably the best way of putting it. Yeah. And uh, and that that feeling of independence, is part partly a, something that interferes with your relationship with God. Yeah. And yeah. I feel that's there more than those times that I feel connected to God, like. Yeah, I feel softer with those those. Correct. Things, you know. So. Yeah, when you have the relationship with God, you will feel softer. Mm. You will feel more in connection. You'll also honour the gifts that God has given you to help you progress. Yeah, it's like a, it's like two different kind of worlds at the same time. Oh, they, no, they don't have it at the same time. It's no, just two different no. worlds. You know? They are two different worlds. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm trying to point out, I suppose, Fab, is the all the different factors that may be interfering with these two areas. So the two areas, in in summary, are. Fear, have a look at your fears. Obviously, there's fears with regard to your relationship where when the relationship starts going a bit topsy-turvy, then interferes with your relationship with God. So obviously, that's telling you that your priority system internally is out of harmony with the best way to progress towards God. Mm. The best way to progress towards God is to have God as your first priority, right? And then there's the issue of desire and what are you doing to develop this desire? And that's, to me, that's like associating with other people who have the desire, associating with other people who know about God, who want to talk about God, who want to spend time feeling about God. A lot of the people you associate with don't want to do that. No. If you think about almost everybody you meet in your day-to-day life, there's very, very few people. There's only a couple that I can ever talk to God about. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. And that's because of my desire isn't. Partly, yeah. but it's also partly because of these other pressures yeah. that you have and partly because the priority system is out of mm. whack, whereas almost every day 
myself and Mary are talking to us, each other or someone else about God and God's nature and God's character and God's feelings and God's all of those different things, right? Mm. Um, mind you, you can do it by yourself, but, but you would also have to then you have time alone where you can think about God, feel about mm. God and so forth. So are you giving yourself that time alone mm. to develop this desire inside of you for this relationship? So that, that are the two things I would focus on. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, to to work through, and your fears tell will dictate to you your priorities. They will. Every time you're afraid of something and you honour that fear, you've now put that fear above everything else in your life, mm. uh, and you've got to see that and reverse that somehow. Mm. Yeah. If you're willing to feel your fear rather than act upon it, then you won't do that. Mm. So you can still have fear. It's just how you treat your fear, how you act, you know, what you do with it. Yeah, it's like it has to ramp right up before I even go there. And yeah. Then, and then I eventually go there, but it's, it's like... It but has it has to, to be intense. Intense. Yeah. And God wants you to be more sensitive than that. Mm. Right? So God's trying, trying, to help you say, trying to help you be really sensitive that it only takes a little bit. Mm. But to be, to be frank, I find this, I have the same difficulties, particularly coming from, uh, in a, from the condition of error and... From my perspective, coming from the condition of low worth is very, very different a process going towards God than coming from the condition where you have worth. Right? So in the end, the biggest emotions you will have to address is your own sense of your own, of your own worth. Mm. Yep. And they will be the biggest impediments to your progress. Yep. Okay? Yeah, thank you. Yep. Yeah. Sis, you want to...